You are tired. I can feel it, so I will cut to the chase. Media on the web matters. And I'm not just saying it because I deeply believe in this. Let me share some numbers with you. Almost 40,000 years of video are watched every day in Chrome. You may want to take some time to digest this. 30% of all time on Chrome for Android is spent watching video. And it is about 15% of all time on Chrome for Android. It is huge. And I'm not the only one to have noticed it. Media PWAs across the world have seen business impact. Spotify globally and Ghana in India are both seeing great success. And it's just the beginning. In the next 20 minutes or so, Angie and I will walk you through four topics we think will help you build great and modern media experiences. We'll cover multitasking with picture-in-picture, -picture, bandwidth saving with the AV1 video codec, a brand new way of switching codecs seamlessly, and finally, playback quality predictability with the Media Capabilities API. Let me tell you a little bit about myself first and how I work. I love to multitask on my computers, doing many things at the same time. Browsing, obviously, writing some code, sharing news on social media platforms, watching educational videos, and so on. This is what I do on a daily basis. And I'm quite sure I'm not the only one to do that. But you may wonder, Francois, this looks cool, but are you good at it? Does that make you more productive? This does not matter. I love to do that, and I want to be efficient at it. But it's not always easy. For instance, watching a video while I'm coding, how does that work? So first, I have to open a separate YouTube window move it to a corner of my screen, and making sure other windows are not covering it. And only then I can start to enjoy. But can you imagine my frustration when window position are not remembered, or when some new window opened in the middle of my little video? But that's OK. That's OK because today, a brand new web API called Picture in Picture sold that very specific use case. Picture in Picture, also known as PEEP, is a common feature in television that allows users to watch video in a floating window, always on top of other windows, so that they can keep an eye on what they're watching while interacting with other sites or applications. The BBC website has shipped picture in picture a month ago, and they're quite happy with the early result they got. Now, like I said earlier, I like to write code, so let me show you some code. To enter picture in picture on a video element, you simply have to call request picture in picture on a video element. And because this call is asynchronous, it will return a promise that can either resolve or reject. And I'll explain why it can reject in a bit. The important thing to notice here is that the user has to interact with the page first to be able to enter picture and picture. In this example, I've used the button. Making this button a toggle button, a toggle button sorry, is quite straightforward. By checking if the video element is not the document that picture and picture element, in other words, already in picture and picture, I'll proceed as before. If it is, let's call document.exit picture and picture. Requesting picture and picture may, may reject for several reasons. The most common ones being the video metadata not loaded yet, picture and picture not supported by the platform, or simply not allowed by the user. The full list of reasons is available in the documentation. Updating your website when the video is playing in picture, picture is crucial. And you may think that waiting for the request picture and picture promise to wait is good enough, but it is not. What if the video enters picture and picture from another path, for instance? What if the user clicked the browser context menu, for instance, or the browser triggered picture and picture automatically like Chrome does on full screen video on Android? This is why I strongly recommend you update your layout and enter and leave picture-in-picture -picture event listeners. Now, having a 4K video playing in a small window may not be what you want. So to adjust the quality of the picture-in-picture, -picture, of the video, sorry, based on the picture-in-picture -picture window size, you can simply check the width and height attribute of the picture-in-picture -picture window available in the enter picture-in-picture -picture event. Too many picture-in-picture, -picture, I know. Adding a resize event to this object would also let you know when the user resized the picture-in-picture -picture window so that you can update the video quality. 
By the way, Angie will walk you later um, on how to change seamlessly the video quality and the codec container to help with that. And finally, defining the availability of the, your custom picture-in-picture -picture button should be as easy as checking the Boolean value of document.picture-in-picture -picture enable, but it is not, because you want your website to be perfect. So you'd also have to check if the HTML video attribute disable picture-in-picture -picture is present. And finally, for real this time, you'd have to check if the video is actually ready to play. And only then, you'd get a perfect implementation for your custom picture-in-picture -picture button in your media player. I'm glad to say that we have shipped picture-in-picture -picture API last month in Chrome 70, in Linux, Mac, and Windows. Chrome OS and Android are coming soon. And we're looking forward to see other browser vendors implement this API as well. You'll find all documentation and sample you need at this URL. Now, what if I tell you this is just the tip of the iceberg? In Chrome 71, currently beta, we'll support media stream video in picture in picture. These two little lines of JavaScript do what you think it does. Your webcam video stream in a picture in picture window. And this already makes me happy. And in case you're wondering, those are real fake glasses. But wait, there's more. Soon, a brand new web API called Screen Capture will allow a website in Chrome to capture a screen to a media stream for recording or sharing over the network. This API will enable a number of web applications, including screen sharing. Imagine now if you combine this API with picture and picture. Let's have a look at this code. After getting the screen with Get Be Display Media and the voice audio stream with Get User Media, I create from scratch a new media stream that contains the screen video stream, including my picture and picture window, and my voice as the audio stream. This code is simply gorgeous, in my opinion. This is it. There is nothing more. So let me show what this code does with a short demo I've created just for you. And can we switch the demo, please? So on the left is me, Francois the hardcore gamer. On the right, it's still me, but this time as a casual viewer. And what you're going to see on the left is me sharing my screen, including the picture-in-picture -picture window, while I'm playing the dino game. So this is me. Hi, mom. And let's see if I'm not bad. So like I said, I'm a hardcore game. OK, sorry, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> so keep in mind that the code you've just seen, with 10 more lines of JavaScript involving the Media Recorder API and some web sockets, are pretty much the entire code for this demo. Can we switch back to the slides, please? The demo is available for you on Glitch if you want to play with it later on. Now, some of you may have noticed that the picture-in-picture -picture window contains only two buttons, a play pause button and a close button. Those are blue there. We've talked to other browser vendors interested in picture-in-picture -picture about this, and we're happy to share that the Media Session API we've talked about last year at Chrome Dev Summit will be used in the near future to add and customize some actions to picture-in-picture -picture window. Think of seek backwards, forward, previous track, next track, and even new ones. If you are already using it for your mobile website, this will come for free. To illustrate these upcoming possibilities, imagine a web app that shows the poster image of a podcast show, for instance, in a picture-in-picture -picture window, all on top, and use these window media controls to tailor the media experience. I think that looks cool, and this is coming as well. So to summarize, picture-in-picture -picture is great for multitasking. And in the near future, it may also be used to record your screen with your webcam, or even to create a custom media center always on top of other windows that users can access easily. I think we all agree that picture-in-picture -picture improves a lot the user experience in general. And you know what else improves it a lot? Video codec. And to talk about this, let me introduce Andy Chiang, a software engineer working on video compression. 
Thank you, Francois. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew from Google's Web Banking. Today, I'm going to share with you that a new generation video codec, AV1, was launched recently. So we have three main goals for AV1. First off, we want AV1 to provide uh, state-of-the-art compression efficiency, among other codecs. Secondly, we want everyone to be accessible by everyone. So we made it an open source project, and it's royalty free. Finally, we want to deploy AV1 widely and quickly. So before I jump into how we did or will do to achieve these goals, let me explain a little bit why video compression is important for users. To visualize the importance of compression for video service. Let me give you an example. Using H.264, a five minutes HD compressed video will take about 300 megabytes. On the other hand, the uncompressed version will take about 25 gigabytes, 80 times larger than the compressed version. This means without video compression, Watching video online will eat up all your internet bandwidth, not to mention the sky, uh, skyrocket cost of storage on the cloud. So more compression gives users a better user experience. We have seen the proof of this with VP9, the predecessor of AV1. YouTube did a comprehensive AB experiment when launching VP9. Compared to H.264, performance improved in a number of ways, ultimately result in higher watch time. This is due to VP9's outperforming coding efficiency. With AV1, we have done it again. A new generation codec provides 30% B-ray reduction over VP9 uh, across a variety of video qualities. This means Given the same quality, AV1's video size will be 30% smaller than VP9. This project integrated over 100 algorithm tools, including the technologies from open source projects like Mozilla's Dala project and Cisco's SOAR project. And again, AV1 is an open source project and it's royalty free. So, its development community, Alliance for Open Media, has attracted 40 companies to join and to contribute their technologies into AV1. There are content providers, streaming service providers, and hardware companies, which covered a wide spectrum of the ecosystem for video on the web. Having Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Mozilla means we can have everyone to work everywhere on the web platform. So we have been working hard toward this goal. In this quarter, AB1 decoder is supported by Chrome browser, and we started serving video content from YouTube. Firefox and Edge are also launched in the beta platform last month. And we plan to integrate the AB1 with WebRTC and the deploy AV1 into Android platform in the following years. Hardware support is also under development, first arriving in 2020 for TVs and mobile handsets. For web developers, using AV1 is easy. You simply need to code its type supported function to make sure the browser supports AV1, then you can start playing the video. So AV1 is very exciting, but rolling out AV1 is not easy. To ease the process of the codec transition, a new change type function is supported on Chrome browser, which allows the browser to switch one codec to the other seamlessly. So for example, when AV1 is not performant on some low-end devices, the stream service can always fall back to VP9, 
which is less complex and may have higher support. Here is a simple code for using change type. So initially, we add a source buffer using VP9. And later on, we can call the change, change type function to switch to AV1. Let me give you some demo about change type. So we start playing video using H.264. You can see that from the top left corner, by clicking the button, we can switch to AV1. Yeah, now we are using AV1. By clicking the button again, Now we switch back to H.264. You can tell there's a transition, right? I think this is really cool. Let's go back to the slide. This is a support slide where you can find information about if you want decoder and change type. Please welcome back on stage Francois, who's going to talk about playback predictability with Media Capabilities API. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> did you ever wish you could predict the future? I know I did. Be some kind of fortune teller. I personally would love to jump into my future, have a quick look, and just come back. Out of curiosity, I asked people around me what they would do with this kind of power. Some said they would love to know if they would become grandparents. Some would like to see if that project is going to be successful. And some, obviously, would simply look for upcoming lottery numbers. Now, brace yourself. In a sense, the Media Capabilities API allows you to predict the future, but only for a media playback on the web. Until recently, web developers had to rely solely on web APIs, such as is type spotted or can play type, to discover whether media could be decoded. While this told them, whether media could be played at all. It didn't provide an indication of whether the media playback would drop lots of frame or rapidly drain the device battery. In the absence of this signal, developers either had to create their own heuristic or just assume that if a device could play back a combination of codec and resolution, it could do so smoothly and power efficiently. For users with less capable devices, this often led to very poor experience. By using the Media Capabilities API today, you can get more information about the client's video decoded performance and make an informed decision about which codec and resolution to deliver to the user. In other words, it helps ensure adaptive video streaming only selects resolution that will play back smoothly on the specific device. Here's how it works in Chrome. The Media Capabilities API uses metrics from previous playback to predict whether future playback in the same codec and at the same resolution will be smoothly decoded. When you ask this API about a specific media configuration, it will return asynchronously three booleans. Is this configuration supported? This is the same result returned by is type supported. You can use it, for instance, to detect whether AV1 video codec is supported, by the way. Is playback going to be smooth? It is currently true if less than 10% of frame have been previously dropped for this media configuration. Is playback going to be power efficient? Am I basically going to drain the device battery? It is true if more than 50% of frame have been decoded by the hardware for this media configuration. Now, warning, this is not some kind of magic API that will tell you what to play. You are in control and have to make decisions about which media configuration to play eventually based on the result of this API. Speaking of results, YouTube experimented with the Media Capabilities API to prevent their adaptive bitrate algorithm from selecting resolution that a device could not play back smoothly. For users who were part of the experimental group, the mean time between rebuffers, also known as MTBR, 
increased by 7.1%, while the average resolution served to the aggregate group measured by video height only declined by 0.5%. These results, as obscure as they may be to some of you, basically show that some users on low-end devices saw less frequently on YouTube the frustrating buffering animation. So just for that, thank you. The media coverage API is available today in Chrome, Firefox, and Safari Tech Preview. As usual, you'll find all documentation and sample you need at this URL. Now, if you remember one thing from this talk about those features, it is that media on the web matters. And the web platform is the best place to serve efficient and delightful media experiences. One last thing. You can find all audio and video updates in Chrome by simply searching for Chrome Media Updates on your favorite search engine. This will allow you to stay up to date with the amazing media feature that Chrome is adding, is adding to the web platform every release. And with that, I humbly thank you for your time.